Um, mm. What's your opinion on the Reggie Wright Jr. arrest? You've probably been asked this a couple of times. Yeah, it's really, I'm just, I'm disappointed most of all. I mean, I really was taken back by it. And I think everybody, especially to see the dad getting wrapped up in it, yeah. that really sucked everybody. Um, so we're just going to have to see how it plays out. But I'm really disappointed. I mean, I just didn't expect that to happen. I guess he must have gotten desperate on, uh, you know, he must have fell on some hard times financially. Yeah. And, and probably probably thinking that weed wasn't that big of a deal, but you start sending it across state lines, and, and I guess there's some prescription pills involved. I'm not sure exactly the extent of the investigation, but I know it was mostly focused on trafficking weed back to Tennessee, I think. Right, right. And what do you think of R.J. Bond's theories? I, you know, I'm kind of forced to think about them, even though I try to avoid it, because I just, I really don't have time for that, for the, the stupidity of it. To be yeah, because it's but, nonsense, isn't it? Yeah, it's, but because people question me about it, or they ask about it, then I engage, and, you know, I'll answer yeah. whatever questions I can, but, you know, it's it just seems like uh, he needs to move on with his life, and, you know, let people, you know, let people really just deal with facts and evidence as opposed yeah. to all this speculation and these grand conspiracies that are ever-changing. I mean, it's just, it's not fair really really to um, people who care about the investigation. It shouldn't, you shouldn't be putting information out there intentionally to confuse people or mislead them, and that's what they, that's what they do in my opinion. But do you think he's purposely trying to confuse people or he actually believes his... Theory. Well, if he's stupid enough to believe that, then I guess, you know, that's the nature of his ability to see yeah. through all of the bullshit. But uh, it's hard for me to imagine that he actually believes it all. I mean, it's just so far out and so baseless that, um, you know, you'd have to have some issues with, you know, with rational processes in order yeah. to believe that shit. Because he's got a lot of followers on YouTube who seem to believe him, and I just find them all deluded. <laughs> um, next question. Um, there's a speculation about a picture of you, that you were, you've been seen at Vegas at the Night Packer shot. Yeah. Is there anything you can... <laughs> it's 1986, and I didn't know anything about Tupac Shakur or Biggie Smalls in 1986. I mean... You know, I didn't even get involved in these cases till 10 years later, until 2006. So for them to even come up with this grand idea that somehow 10 years before I'm even assigned the case, I'm, in, I'm, I'm, I'm posing as, yeah. a, uh, as a, I think, a Las Vegas police officer or a bicycle cop or some shit like that. It's just... It's, oh, so that, fo that photo of you in Vegas is in, on that night? Because they're, um, they're trying to say you was the night pack or shot that you were working in right, Vegas. Right. But that's obviously bullshit then. I mean, the, the fact that you're asking the question is actually, it's discouraging because it's yeah. such obvious bullshit. Yeah. You, to, you know, it just seems to me that there's a younger generation of people who don't really seem to think for themselves. Exactly. They let the internet tell them yeah. what to think. They see a YouTube video and then that becomes truth to yeah. them. Yeah. Or they'll see some accusation, and well, it must be true because it was on YouTube or the internet. And it's just—it's unfortunate. It's kind of sad, actually, that people live their lives that way with such, um, you know, with being so vulnerable and so influential yeah. without thinking through things. You know, maybe that's why this generation is in the state that they are. Who knows? Because I've read a few comments, people discussing it. But I didn't believe it. I thought I might as well just ask you to hear it from you. Yeah. Um, the, on your documentary, you said it took three years to basically solve the case. Why do you think that weren't done just from 97? So why weren't it solved by, say, 2000, 2001? I just don't think that people were putting the effort into it at that time in 2000, 99. You know, it had already been investigated and 
relatively thoroughly, both Tupac and Biggie. You know, those police departments were looking into it, but it's difficult when people don't want to cooperate and give you the information that you need to solve a case. And so when witnesses are reluctant or they're lying, it just takes the investigation down, you know, these these the, these dark and aimless roads sometimes. And you know, that's the challenge, um, you know, if, with that kind of case, a gang-related case where people just um, choose not to cooperate with law enforcement. That's the primary reason that the cases aren't solved. Because the Nick Broomfield documentary, I, I actually believed that when it was first released. But I look at it now like it's such a joke how someone could just watch out and believe everything basically what Nick Broomfield showed. Um, Keefe D's confession was around 2008, so that's almost a decade ago. Is there anything new he's confirmed since? Have you spoken to him since? Yeah, there's there's much more to say about that, and unfortunately, I'm not at liberty to discuss it because there are projects I'm involved in that I don't control. Cool. And uh, but it, we're not done hearing from Keefe D. I can assure you that. Um, I believe that a month or so ago, a short little trailer dropped where he discussed that he was going to divulge things. It was a leaked trailer. Well, um, that that project, uh, that Death Row Chronicles project, is up and running and we'll just have to see what's on it because I've, there was supposed to be like an interview but i think youtube removed it to do with rights or something yeah it was it was a trailer for an upcoming project uh, and okay. somehow it got leaked and uh youtube you know had it for a moment and had to take it down for um you know copyright infringement cool um can you see how people find it hard to believe the surge or did they hit on Biggie, especially from prison? Because I believe in myself, but how would you have known about Biggie coming to L.A. and his whereabouts if he was basically locked up? Well, Shug's in the rap game and in the hip-hop and the entertainment business. Biggie's in the rap game and in the hip-hop and in the entertainment business. L.A. is Suge's backyard. He's got eyes and ears out there. Right. Biggie had been out here for weeks. It was well known that there was this big after party at the Peterson Auto Museum. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to kind of draw those conclusions that that would be a likely place for him to show up. So I don't think there's anything about that at all that should be unusual or suspicious. Cool. Yeah. Um, Keefe D mentions about a phone call when Diddy was asked, was that us? Mm -hmm. And he says the faith called as well. Do you think she right. knows what went down? It's hard to say what she knew at the time. Uh, she's been a little evasive yeah. uh, during interviews and over the years, but there's, you know, there could be different explanations for that. You know, um, and Christopher Wallace and um, Zip were relatively close and Puffy and Zip were close. Yeah. And so there was a small group of inner, inner, you know, an inner circle. How much Faith knew, it's hard to say, but as close as she was to Zip, it would surprise me that she didn't at least become aware of it immediately after the fact. Right, because God, he was godfather to the son, I think. Right. So... Yeah, sounds a bit... Because in her interviews, she seems a bit... I don't know. I think when people start bringing up the beef that happened, she seems to dodge a few questions. So just... Yeah, if you ever get a chance to look at a uh, 2000 Vanity Fair article about Puffy, I think it's called Puffy, Puffy's the King or something to that effect. And um, it's a very long article, very thorough and comprehensive article. And if you read that... It uh, claims that Zip was also a godfather to Puffy. I'm sorry that, yeah, I got that correct. Yeah. And that, uh, you know, he had hired him as a security consultant, and, and Zip in turn hired these Southside Crips. Now, this is 2000. Now, I don't come along and talk to Keefe about this until early 2009. And uh, all of this has already been written, yeah. you know, in, in these newspaper articles. So um, these type of things corroborate you know, a person's claims, and they say this, well, we can look and 
and see that other people have said those same things. So it helps us corroborate those type of claims. And um, Poochie, is there anyone else apart from Sergio and his ex-wife who, co- who confirmed that Poochie was the shooter? Okay. Um, the, the information we have about Biggie's murder is certainly not as definitive and strong as it is about Tupac's. Right. Uh, Tupac, met, you know, quite a few people were coming forward saying that Orlando and Dre and T. Brown were involved in that. So um, we're supremely confident that that's exactly what took place out in Vegas. With the thing with Pucci, um, much of it is just understanding the dynamics of his relationship with Suge and these claims that were made by Suge's girlfriend, his baby mama, and, and the you know identification of a vehicle that he had access to. And all of those things kind of weigh in um, with him being the primary suspect. And we don't have any alternative theory that brings on a stronger explanation. Yeah. You know, so there has always been out there this you know, David Mack um, association, this dirty LAPD guy. Um, but even with that, at the end of the day, you're still stuck with Suge soliciting either one, whether it's from Pucci or David Mack. But there's no evidence that cop theory was investigated upside down for years and by you know, agencies outside of the LAPD, such as the FBI. And there is absolutely nobody, with the exception of a of a proven liar named Kevin Hackey to ever connect David Mack or Rafael Perez uh, with Suge Knight. So there's no evidence for it, but because it's a story that has kind of captured public attention, yeah. like I said earlier, people watch a, video, you know, a YouTube video or hear some claims, and then they accept, well, that's what happened without really taking the time to learn the facts behind it. Oh. So aside from those two theories, what's left? This new ridiculous little half dead theory that this schizophrenic child molester posed and people yeah. are running with that? They're not even taking the time to realize that this guy is mentally ill who's <laughs> asserting this idea, you know, who's been lying his whole entire life and doesn't know any better really because he's sick in his head. Yeah. And yet want to grab onto that as if it could be true without taking a little bit of a step back and saying, well, hold on a minute. If the source is corrupted, then the story is probably corrupted too. So, I can't believe people actually believe him. Honestly, I'm it's very surprising. And why do you think Serge didn't get a Lando kill but went for Biggie? I know you mentioned it in the murder rap documentary, but, you know, you'd think he'd want to get rid of the person who killed one of his best friends oh are you talking about should um like going after diddy instead of yeah diddy? like why do you get rid of biggie and not orlando yeah well he would certainly have given a green light on orlando as a matter of fact they did there was a green light on any south side crib mm. and had the mob pie rube been able to get their hands on orlando then they would have taken care of business um, but it's not as easy as just going over to his house, knocking on the door, and shooting it. You know, the chances are when you pull up in his front yard, he's going to shoot you before you yeah. shoot him. And this is the nature of gang warfare. This is the nature of this is why they do drive-by shootings and just randomly shoot because exactly. they can't uh, they can't pin somebody down. And uh, so it's a difficult thing to do. It's much more difficult to identify a guy, find him, and then kill him under these circumstances. But the gang war certainly broke out. We see tons of evidence for that. Yeah. And people talking about it. And then as far as Suge not, you know, um, contracting for the death of, of Puffy, unfortunately, rumors started, bad information hit the streets, and uh, big, I'm sorry, um, people had said that Biggie was in Las Vegas, and that Biggie hired the Southside Crips, and that Biggie had provided the gun, none of which was true. But because it was a rumor on the street and it was plausible at the time, yeah. we were, that's why Suge believed that and targeted Biggie as opposed to Puffy. And then it was too late then, wasn't it? That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> um, how... it's only six months after Pac is killed, so that's relatively quick considering all these things going on. Suge's in jail, the gang war, all kinds of police attention from 
all these different agencies. So, yeah, a lot was happening. To you about the Diddy's offer with Keefe D, because that's always a debatable thing. People say, oh, Keefe did was in the car, but I don't reckon Diddy done the million offered him anything at all. He's just saying it, sort of right. thing. Well, I'm entirely convinced that the, that the version that Keefe D is telling us is true. But I add this caveat. I believe that you have to qualify and understand the circumstances surrounding Diddy. I don't think that he's this cold-blooded killer. I don't think he wanted anybody to die. Yeah. I think he was afraid for his life. And that was out of this sense of desperation that, uh, you know, he said, hey, man, help me out here. I, I need, you know, whatever it takes. But I think he's talking out of fear and desperation. And if he throws out a million dollars, it's not necessarily like, okay, we have a contract. I will give you one million dollars cash if you do this. It wasn't ironed out like that. Yeah. It, was, it was a conversation between two guys where one's afraid and asked the other guy to help him out. And when you, when you, when you put it in that context, then you realize that, you know, this is just um, a conversation. It was taken too far, perhaps misunderstood by Keith. And yeah. And, uh, you know, one thing leads to another. If Orlando didn't get jumped that night, Tupac does not get shot that night. Yeah. I've always said that. When I debate with some of my friends, I always say, if he didn't get punched, stomped, Pac would have probably still been alive. And then Absolutely. Biggie would have been alive if Pac didn't get shot by Orlando. Mm -hmm. It's crazy stuff. Mm -hmm.